I'm actually quite nervous. <laughs> anyway, about two weeks ago, I put a video out titled, I Need Your Help. And basically, I was asking my subscribers and viewers of that video to send me questions for a Q&A session a video that I wanted to put out. Thank you so much for all the responses that I got from that. It's very much appreciated, as it always is when you comment and like and share the videos. Really appreciate that. Um, I have got a, a decent loyal following as well, so uh, and it and it tends to be the same name sort of cropping up within that. So that's that's very special to me. I'm not a massive channel, not got many. I've not got a masses and masses of subscribers, but uh, I, I have got a very loyal small following. And on the back of that as well, I've also uh, heading up to 3,000 subs. I'm about 120 subs off. So if you've not subscribed to the channel, I would very much appreciate it if you could press the uh, subscribe button as well. It, it, it means a hell of a lot to me. It means a lot to the channel as well. So I can carry on bringing these videos out. Anyway, I'm bambling on too much now. I tend to do that when I get a bit nervous. But anyway, let's get straight into these questions and see where it takes us. <laughs> Not in any particular order, I've got the uh, laptop in front of me and I'm going through the comments as they fell in the comments section of the video. Oh, I must point out as well, I'm not in a studio environment, so you may hear the odd dog barking, you may hear a train go past in the distance, just depending on how sensitive this microphone is. And uh, anyway, <laughs> let's hope none of that happens, but uh, it, it could happen, so I apologise for that in advance. So let, just starting from the top then of these comments, so Jeanette Mason, hi Jeanette, hope you're well. So Jeanette has asked, she says, hi Jay, lovely to meet you at the Wild Bad Weekend. Likewise, uh, my question is, if you could go on the perfect tour, who would you go with, where would you go, and which bike would you ride? Very interesting question. So, let's start from the front. Who would I go with? I think you've got to have a select few of people that you know them sort of intimately. You need to know personalities. You need to know that they're going to work as a team, and they're not going to pull it down for everybody else. It only takes one person, if you go on a tour, to be, you know, to sort of like, do their own thing or not want to you know it's very hard and very awkward um and it's like everything i suppose in life it's like if you've got a mix of friends and you get that awkward one who goes against the grain sometimes it, yeah it can be challenging sometimes it can be fun but sometimes it can be quite bad as well so you know quite toxic but uh obviously peaky biker is uh he's a lad that i'd like to go with um moist decoy is another one i'd probably want to go with richie vida top man i'd like to go on a tour with him as well I've, well I've already been touring with them i've already been touring with the other lads as well and and the the them sort of personalities aren't they that you that you get on with and you know that uh, it, it, you're just going to enjoy every second of it. But where would you go? So there's so many different places I want to go to, but there's so many different environments as well. So I would like to do the mountain roads of Vietnam. I would like to do the dirt roads of Australia. I'd like to do the mountainous roads and long sweeping bends of New Zealand. It's just, it's just, endless what i want to do i want to do the route 66 at some point um you've also put in there which bike would you ride i think again it depends where you go um if i was to go to say like if i was go to go into australia i'd want to i want a bike set up because i want to do the dirt roads i'd want a bike set up for off-roading riding i'd also uh if i if i did the mountainous roads and, I, and that's all i was doing like mountain roads around vietnam then again i'd probably just want something with road tires on that was set up for that i do love the gsa and um, but i also love the ktm as well the ktm has got a special place in my heart even though it did let me down it's like one of them ex-girlfriends isn't it that's sort of like you know it, it all started off well and it ended bad but there's still something for your first love in there in inside there so so yeah, it it it, it all depends on where I would go uh, and what bike I would ride. But uh, but the two bikes that would be at the top of my list are the GSA and the KTM twelve ninety. So thanks for that, Jeanette. So the next one is Baza seven six five. Hello, mate. How are you doing? I know you uh, you follow the channel quite religiously, and you uh, you do comment quite a bit as well, and uh, very much appreciated it is as well. So you've put as a nosy bee. Use your imagination. I like to know about the man behind the helmet. Jobs, hobbies, life. 
Um, right, okay, so I am just a working man, biker. Uh, I enjoy martial arts. I enjoy watching martial arts. I wear my heart on my sleeve sometimes. Um, what else can I say, really? The man behind the helmet, the jobs and hobbies and stuff like that. And life, I'm married. I've got uh, three children. I've got five grandchildren. Yeah, I don't look old enough. Yes, I do. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just like any other working man. You know, I go to work, I pay my taxes and get screwed by the government. But, but yeah, it's all good. It's all good. We are, you know, I'm not in a bad, bad situation. I've got, a, I've got a good job. Um, I think somebody's asked me that further down, so I'm not going into too much detail into that. I do apologise for that, but you will hear about that. And the hobbies, like I say, the martial arts. I'm getting a little bit older now, so um, I've done a lot of teaching. Um, started off as the taekwondo, uh, second dan taekwondo. We then got into Kung Fu, things like that, traditional martial arts. And then, you know, I think it's been about 30, 38 years I've been doing it. And then I got into the MMA, teaching MMA as a striking coach. Um, that that I give that up about probably about five, six, maybe a bit more now, seven, seven years ago. But I do like to try and keep my hand in. I train with my mate, Billy Big Arms. Um, and, we, and we do a bit now and again, although I've not done a bit for a while as well, because I've had obviously had the issue with my ankle anti. So, uh, but yeah, some good questions there, mate. Thank you for that. And uh, thank you for the ongoing support as well. So Stephen Howard 8792. Hello, mate. How you doing? Hi, Jay. Really enjoyed the video as usual. So my question is, have you got a go-to place, location that you go to in your general local area? That's a place you visit to just chill out, reboot and reflect on stuff and life in general. Your go-to place and a thumbs up. Right, so... Regular viewers of this channel know that I love a good bench and there is a bench that overlooks Woodhead Pass that I tend to go to quite a lot and I've been going there. In fact, if you go back to my very first vlog on the Suzuki GSX 650 or whatever it was, I did that on that bench and a few reviews that have followed that I've also done at that bench. So it is pretty special. It does hold a special place in my heart, that place. Um, if I'm feeling stressed out and stuff, it's literally five minutes away from my house. So I can just jump on the bike up there and just, just chill out and just watch the world go by. Musty Chapstick. Hello, mate. So Musty Chapstick has also got a uh, YouTube channel. So go and check him out. So great to see uh, my local roads from a different perspective. What gravel road is fun for me as an off-road novice? As for a question, if you could go on a bike trip anywhere, where would you go and what bike would you take? So obviously we're going to get some questions that are going to be repeated in this. So that can't be helped. I am just doing this raw, so I apologize for that. But yeah, again, if I could go on a trip. So let's just take the question away from what Jeanette asked where she said about going on a tour. So if we if we basically base this on going on a trip so small trips for me are in this country obviously um trips up to the lakes trips up to scotland and um, that could be classes of trip wales uh, places like that um and what bike would you take the gsa if it was in this country definitely the gsa um i love that bike i love that bike but again reliability it would be the ktm if i didn't have reliability issues so uh, so thanks for that, buddy. GS Rider 65. Hiya, buddy. Hope you're well. Thanks for the question. IJ, how about a bit of your bike history? <laughs> like age, when you started, and what bikes you have owned. So the easiest one I can go for is I've probably been riding bikes for, believe it or not, I mean, I am 52, I had to think then. I'm 52 years old, and I've only been riding probably... 11 no 10 years about 10 years i've been riding bikes as for what i've owned that is a sore question with a wife because i get bored so easily and i've had more more bikes than i've had hot dinners put it that way and i've just got uh, just here in the garage i'm just looking up at some of the bikes that i've got up on the wall <laughs> where i've had you know biker picks or road runners or whatever they're called taking snaps of me which i've i've uh, i've got on the wall there um gsxr uh, I've had an S-Rad, started off with an S-Rad. That was the very first sort of big bike I'd got, was the S-Rad. Um, and then I've had you know, Kawasaki Z1000, 
GS, just a normal GS1200, the GSA1200, the GSA1250, Holly Davidson Fatboy, uh, Holly Davidson, I've got to remember what that one's called now, the, uh, the, uh, the Iron Sportster, that was it. So I've had two Sportsters, three, three Sportsters. I've had the Harley Davidson Fat Boy, which I just mentioned, which I wish I'd never got rid of that one. Um, what else have we got up there? KTM. Can't forget the KTM. Uh, I've had the NC750X. Um, what else have I had? I've had the, the little 125 uh, Hero thing. Um, yeah, I can't, you know what? I can't really think. There's that many that I've had, that many bikes that I've had. But uh, I've enjoyed every single one of them. And I think I've now found my niche, though, with with adventure bikes. And I've just noticed as well, this microphone's wobbling a bit. It's on this, I've got this wobbly desk, which your reader knows all about that, uh, wobbly desks, because I chucked uh, tea all over him once when we went for breakfast. Just thought I'd get that one in. Lee GSX. So, Lee, hello, mate. How are you? I know you comment quite regularly, probably on every single video, and I do really appreciate that, mate. You know that. Um, can never express how much I appreciate the comments, but uh, but yeah, thank you for all the effort and time you put in, matey. Uh, question, summer riding gear, which, which would you go for if budget was not an issue, and which would you go for if it was an issue? I think if it wasn't an issue, issue I would go for the, I mean, uh, the Gore-Tex, I've just bought the Fox jacket because I just refused to pay over a grand for a jacket, like your Klims and stuff. Like, I just think they're absolutely ridiculous. And I think even if it wasn't an issue, I wouldn't buy the Klim and stuff. Now, I'm not taking anything away from them. I think they're absolutely fantastic jackets. I know people who's got the jackets. But Risha and people like the, uh, people like that, you know, they do laminated jackets. And they're just, they're just as good. They keep the, as long as they keep the rain out, what's, what more do you want? So the one I've got at the minute is a Fox. I think that was about 700 quid. But I think going above that is is a bit pushing the boat out. I do like RST gear. I've got a lot of RST gear. I've also got, just looking up behind me there, I've also got the, the road skin as well. I do like road skin. The jackets, they're, they're fantastic. But you've put uh, riding gear there as well, so I've, I've probably digressed a little bit there. So uh, the summer riding gear, I, uh, I've got the Fjordigan... Uh, mesh jacket at the minute but rst i've got an rst one as well uh, the rst are the lower budget ones i think um the furigan one i mean that furigan jacket was just over 100 pound i'm sure you can get a lot more for your money when you're buying uh you know when you're buying gear i've got le leathers i don't really tend to wear leathers i've got a couple of leather jackets oxford jackets so i've got a range really rst oxford fox uh and stuff like that so yeah i think i think that um, probably sums it up really um i know you can get these these new vests that have come out now that's like really thin in the shirts and stuff and i think they're all right but i don't know if i'd wear one of those i'm not sure i haven't got the physique for that and then the other thing if it so if if money was an issue like i say you can get some decent gear out there now especially summer gear and as long as you've got the the right correct ratings is it double a triple a or whatever it is i mean i know that uh, road skin jacket is i think that's triple a rated you're going to get a decent protection aren't you so I, I think i think biking stuff is very affordable but if you want to go proper high-end range and start buying your clim and stuff like that then uh, yeah i just I, I just think you can you can spend silly money and i think it's already expensive i think the if you want to spend your money spend it on your lid you know get a decent lid protect your head so thanks for that, Lee. Julie Lockett, 7886. Hiya, Julie. Hope you well. Nearly had the uh, pleasure of meeting you down at Monia. And I was a bit gutted when you said that you was there and you saw me and I, and I didn't, uh, didn't get to say hello because, I, again, another great supporter of the channel. Thank you so much, Julia. I really appreciate that and all your comments and everything as well. Um, yeah, fantastic. And all on Instagram as well. So, yeah, thanks for that. So my question is, what made you become a YouTuber? Richie Vida. Richie Vida made me become a YouTuber. So, it, oh, this goes back to a, another bike that I not mentioned earlier. I've had three VFR 800s as well. When you buy a new bike, you like to know everything about that bike. So that's what I did. Richie Vida's channel came up, started watching it. Realised it wasn't really techy about the bike, but they was doing these fantastic tours and stuff like that on the bike as well. And I just watched them and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to stick a camera on my head and do it. So I stuck a camera on my head. If you go back to my, well, don't go back to my earlier videos because they're absolute garbage. But I think I can look at them and safely say that as I've come up and progressed through the years, the experience um, that I've gained from um, from trying different things is, is, is paying off. 
and I think I've got you know decent quality out there. The videos are decent quality, the footage, the audio, and everything like that. So, uh, so yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was Richie Vida. I, I just thought if he can do it, I can do it. Anybody can do it. And I, and I, I got into it, and now I don't think I can get out of it. Even though I have, I do have my off days. As you all know, I've had my off days and thinking about giving up and stuff. But it's just more of a. It, it can drain you sometimes. It can get too much, and as as you get as popularity grows, um, I think the stress of it all grows as well with it. But yeah, it was uh, it was Richie. So thanks for that, Richie. Right. So the next question is from Chris Clement six four five eight. Hi, Chris. How you doing, mate? How hot was the hot sauce? Rich video had me in tears. Not only was that sauce the hottest thing that I have ever tasted. It was also the most disgusting thing I've ever tasted as well. It, it, it was like licking or drinking battery acid. When I first took it, I thought, oh, it's a bit spicy. But when it kicked in, I honestly thought I needed a doctor. It was really bad. And I had the smallest bit as well. I can do hot, but not mega hot. Yeah, I think it's just the taste of it. And I'm like, who would even, who would even have that on the burger? It was demo it was just disgusting. Put it this way, I was looking for the fire extinguisher should just stick around my throat and put the flame flames out. It was it was just hot. And everyone around me were just laughing. So anyway. Andy Stewart, six two four three. I Andy. Had a good bond with Andy. We went up to um the ski resort in the Picos. He was the one, if you've seen the video, came up on the uh, Africa Twin, the Red Africa Twin, shouting, yeah, 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 and, and uh, honking the horn. I thought that was brilliant because I shared this same sort of emotion with him, and, but he was uh, he was absolutely on top of the world. So good to meet you, Andy. I feel like I've got a lifelong friend there, my, my friend. You were absolutely fantastic, pal, and, and such a, a top guy as well. So your question is, Picos or Portugal next year? Picos or Portugal, if I had the option to go to Portugal, it would be Portugal. And that's not taking anything away at all from Picos, but I do feel like I've done Picos. Although I do want to go back to Picos and I will be going back, obviously, if I get an invite. But yeah, Portugal, had, had, I've sort of looked up on Portugal and it is probably one of those places I'd like to go. Um, what was your highlights of the Spain trip in June? Highlights of the Spain trip in June was meeting you, Andy. <laughs> and all the other lads that were there i made some fantastic friends there we bonded every every and again this just goes back to the, what we were saying earlier about people getting on and having different diverse backgrounds you know there's so many different people from different backgrounds getting to know people as well i love that i love sitting down and getting to know people i like people who are open as well it doesn't matter whether they've got money haven't got money um got a job haven't got a job it doesn't matter all people have got qualities in them and to share different qualities different experiences with people is just fantastic so i think the highlight for me was yes the roads were absolutely brilliant but i think the highlight was the camaraderie of meeting new people and riding new roads together as a group looking out for one another i thought it was brilliant there's nothing finer in this world is there so yeah i love that well, so thanks the for that question mate. is from vfr mitch uh, another youtuber so uh, go and check his uh, go and check his channel out decent bloke i've met him a, a couple of times so if reliability depreciation wasn't an issue which two bikes would you have in your garage your budget is 25k for both answers on a postcard 25k for both i'm guessing i could get any bike even a GSA second hand. So let's go for second hand. So I'd have a GSA and a KTM. If reliability and depreciation wasn't an issue. In fact, no, I wouldn't. I tell a lie. I jumped in head first with that one. I would have the KTM 1290 as my main touring bike, having fun bike. And then I'd probably go with something like, um, I don't know, like a Triumph Scrambler. Something a bit more, you know, a bit of fun to it. A bit of fun. Something I can just throw around um, just, just for, like, little roads and cafe runs and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'd probably have... Uh, I do like the Triumphs. Oh, that was another one. Another bike that I've actually owned. The Triumph Thunderbird 1600. I had one of those. So, yeah, something like that. Uh, Harley Davidson, even. Um, something completely different genre. But, like I say, they'd have to be second. And if there was new, I would probably go for the... Suzuki. Is it the V-Strom? Can't remember. The Suzuki anyway. I don't know if it I can't remember if it's the V-Strom. Is that is that Suzuki? Is it the V-Strom? I think it is. I think it is. So that'd be like a touring bike. And then probably just go for something like a sports bike or something. Don't know. Don't know. But uh 
but yeah, the main bikes, I would have the KTM if, if reliability and depreciation wasn't an issue. So thanks for that, mate. Oh, here we go. Richie Vida. My question. Are you Richie, pal? Hope you're well. What is the single most important thing to remember when, when you're trying... Uh, sorry. What is the single most important thing to remember when trying very, very hot sauce? <laughs> Not rubbing my eyes, Richie. Because that made me cry, mate. And uh, I'm glad it provided entertainment for you, buddy. But yeah, if you have hot sauce and you get it on your hands, never, ever rub your eyes. Or your lower region. <laughs> Thanks for that, Rich. So the next one is from PE.OGSA -E Rider. How you doing? Hope you're well. Hi, mates. I spend most of my time riding in and around the Peak District, exploring many, mainly back B and back roads. It's getting increasingly difficult now with all the slow moving traffic. I tend now to head out east. So my question, what is your biggest bugbear when out and about traffic? 100% traffic. I was on about this today, actually. I went out for a ride with Moiste. And we were saying that when you're stuck behind a car, there's nothing more frustrating when that car is below, well below the speed limit. If that car decides to go to the speed limit, why would you want to overtake them? Unless you want to have a bit of fun and a bit of th uh, throttle blipping. But there's nothing worse than being on a, a 60 road and the car in front's doing 40. So yeah, traffic is a massive bugbear. And I even avoid places like Castleton and stuff like that because I know how busy they get. Now, there is a flip side to that. If you go riding through the winter months at different times of the day, later on in the day, you won't hardly get any traffic. So it makes the experience completely different. And people who don't know how to drive a car, because there's plenty of them out there. So thank you for that. Alan Oswin, 8827. Hi, Alan. Hope you're well, buddy. What would you consider... I think this is a question. What would you consider leading... Uh, sorry, would you consider leading a trip to Europe? Where would it be and when are we going? So would I consider leading a trip to Europe? Uh, no. No. <laughs> The reason being is because to sit up front and lead people on a journey, you were just relying on you. I did a subs ride out and the stress of doing a subs ride out with 30 odd bikes behind me was, a, it was a couple of hours and it just, the stress was unbelievable. And thankfully I had people who was helping out like carts, wheels, moisty and all that was helping out. But yeah, it was just unbelievable, the stress. And I, I don't think I could go on a trip, taking people, you know, getting people to follow me down uh, in case I took the wrong turn in, in case the digs wasn't very good and stuff like that. I just, no, nah, I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. It's so much easier when you go on a trip. When I went to the PCOS, knowing that somebody else has just organized that trip and you just tagging along, you enjoy it a lot better now and hats off to people who can do it i don't think i can do that where would it be again you're saying europe it'd probably be like your northern spain portugal not really into france the alps i've done the alps through germany Liechtenstein, all, that, all them sort of places italy italy's a nightmare though when you're riding apart from uh, you know if you're riding in heavy traffic and when we're going whenever you invite me pal whenever you invite me so thanks for that alan okay so we've got another one here from vfr mitch if you were giving advice to any new bikers regarding clothing and safety gear, would it be buy cheap and upgrade as funds allow or save up a bit longer and buy higher quality stuff? I think if I said hang on and wait until funds allowed, I'd be a bit of an hypocrite. When I first started riding, I can hand on heart say that the gear wasn't 100% good. That's only because I know what I know now. I think there's a lot of misleading companies out there that will mislead people and say that, you know, it's the best quality, it doesn't do this, it does this, and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't know that at the time, but I know it now. I would say that just make sure that it's got the correct rating. Just make sure that it is going to protect you in a slide and a fall. You can always pack it out with with the tops and stuff underneath as well to give you a bit more protection. If you can't afford the proper trousers or you don't want to wear the leather trousers, just you know go for some heavy duty jeans. And what I found as well, if you wear heavy duty jeans, put another layer on underneath just an extra, just to give you that extra protection. Eventually, when you do get wise to what the gear is, I'd say there's nothing more valuable than getting the correct gear. And I think the most important is the helmet. You've got to get a decent helmet that's gonna that's going to save you because if anything happens to your head it doesn't matter about your arms and legs does it uh, my advice would be that you are going to go out and you are going to buy that but just just be careful and just be mindful and, and try and go on reputation like i say some of the gear you can get now rst stuff um is relatively cheap and affordable 
I know if the, the sports bike um, shop is one of them, just for example, you can buy stuff and you can use Klarna uh, as a payment method, which allows you to pay in three monthly installments. And I think that's uh, that's really good. And that, I've done that in the past and a really expensive item. And I just thought, you know, I, I, I don't want to fork that out this month. So I've just done it over three months. So there's always there's always those options as well. So yeah, good question, mate, that. Thank you. So Robbie Moto, another YouTuber. Hiya, Robbie. Hope you're well, buddy. My question would be, what's your preference regarding bike gear? Do you prefer leathers, textiles, a mix of both, or like me at the moment, prefer urban looking bike wear? I think it all depends, obviously, on the weather. I think it depends on the trip. You know, when I'm going motorway riding and stuff like that, I make sure that I've got 100% correct full gear on i do like the urban look stuff uh again it depends on your bike doesn't it as well i suppose when i've had harley davidson's i'd like i've liked the urban look with the gs i don't go full-on action man adventure look um i suppose i just do my own thing really don't really do leather i'm not really into the leather stuff I, i'm not really uh, only in the bedroom but yeah it's just going to be textile stuff all day long for me and boots and stuff like that again urban boots waterproof boots full boots adventure boots I, i've just tried them all uh, bike gear for me is just what's really available and, and what's comfortable and what's going to keep me safe. So thanks for the question, buddy. Appreciate yes, that. The next one is Colin Barber, 9324. Hi, hi Colin. Hope you're well, buddy. Again, uh, one of my regulars. So uh, thanks for the support. Really, really appreciate it. Okay, Jay. Favourite bike and why? Least favourite shit bike and why give us the breakdown of the bikes you have owned so at the start of the video i'll give you a breakdown of all the bikes that i can remember that i've owned so hopefully that's answered the question there um sorry i didn't get to yours first but that's just the way the look of the draw unfortunately and there's obviously there are similar questions in here favorite bike ktm without a shadow of the doubt if i didn't have reliability issues with that ktm that is one of the best bikes i've ever ridden it fit me well it gave me loads of confidence turned me into a bit of a hooligan and it could do everything obviously if i wanted a reliable bike and i'm one that i'm particularly enjoying at the minute is the gsa so my genre is definitely adventure bikes at the minute um so yeah it's between those two but the ktm can't fault it beautiful beautiful bike lovely bike the least favorite bike and why i can't really think of a shit bike i can't really think that i've had any sort of bad experiences with bikes apart, apart from reliability issues just adding to the list as well of bikes as i mentioned earlier I, they're all coming back now i've had two multi-stradas as well <laughs> ducati multi-stradas i've also had an suzuki sv as well sv 1000 and an sv 650 i'm racking up these bikes now a shit bike i don't know i 100 percent hand on heart just love the riding and yeah there are better bikes than others handling better than others but i just i really cannot think of all the bikes that i've owned that have been crap apart from the ones that let me down constantly so thanks colin i'm, I'm hoping that's answered your question mate andrew mason 2879 i andy uh, your editing skills and videos are excellent mate thank you very much my question is you come across very relaxed and natural on camera, okay? Did you feel awkward filming yourself when you first started your channel? And how long did it take before it felt natural? Also, do you ever take your wife with you as pillion? I'll answer that one first because that's quite easy. No, I don't. Motorcycling can be dangerous. I know it can be dangerous. But I don't want to be responsible for somebody else on the back. And I know it's a bit of a lame answer. If I'm in a car, it could be the same in a car, but I just feel like you've got a bit, bit better chance in a car. I, I'm trying not to make this gloomy, but yeah, I just don't want to be responsible for someone on the back of a bike because I know it's like mainly the idiots and not, not so much about how I ride a bike, but it's, it's the other idiots on the road that you've got to keep your eyes out for. I don't have pillion cover on my insurance and I do that for a reason that I can't carry anybody either. Um... So yeah, it's probably a bit of a selfish thing. But I think the main reason with that is as well, I like to get out on the bike as a, as a bit of an escapism. And part of that escapism is probably escaping the wife. So that's that's the answer to that question, basically. With the other one, with the editing and the uh, coming natural, I'm just myself. I'm just, I'm just me. Somebody, I think it was Richie actually, that just said, you know, just be yourself because if you if you try and fabricate this different person people are just going to see through it so when i met you at the weekend uh, you and you and the missus you know you could probably see that i come across as i am what i am on the camera 
it felt a little bit weird when I first started it, you know, holding a camera on myself, especially when around people. But now well, I just don't care. In real life, I'm quite, uh, this is me. I'm relaxed. Yeah, things get under my skin. I do get stressed like everybody else. I do have issues like everybody else. I have worries like everybody else. But yeah, I just, I just sort of go with the flow and just see where it takes me. You just got to be natural on camera. Um, and because I'm natural, it, it comes naturally, obviously. Good question, buddy. Thank you. On the bike, Will, congratulations on the baby, mate. I've not been round yet. It's been about five weeks. So congratulations to you and Shelby. Also got a, a YouTube channel on the bike, on the bike. Who was the gorgeous Z900 rider? And when will he next be invited for a vlog ride to improve female subscriptions? <laughs> mate, you don't need to come on mine for that. And in fact, I think they give me a wide berth. So uh, you best just be on your own for that, buddy. And you put, P.S., come meet my daughter. Yes, I will definitely be coming to meet your daughter, mate. I do apologise for not being round already. Mr. Chihuahua, cracking channel, do you still ride the bullet hero? No, I don't. So the bullet hero is just the little 125 that I had, and uh, I really wish that I'd kept that bike. I had so much fun on that bike, but like any bike, I just let it go and just regret it after. Motor Tour Island. Hiya, buddy. I know he's a, another regular. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for the support and everything as well of the channel. Really appreciate that. How good is the Roadskin hoodie for wind and cold? Roadskin hoodie is absolutely fantastic. I don't think they can, well, they don't label it as waterproof, but it does keep a certain amount of water out. Been out today and had a few showers and I was dry when I got back. Windproof? Yep. Very, very well made, mate. If, you, if you're thinking about purchasing one, you've got to get one. They're very well made, really thick. Um, every, everything about it, it, it shouts quality. Uh, I was quite surprised when I got him how, how good the quality was. But yeah, no issues whatsoever. It's probably my go-to jacket for the summer. Um, you could probably wear it in the winter as well if you wear, wore some, uh, some garments underneath. But um, one thing I would say is if you're a certain size, make sure you get the next size up because I've ended up buying two because the first one I bought was too tight across the shoulders. Um, so, yeah, you're better off buying the next one up so you, you're a lot more comfortable in it. So, yeah, thanks for that question, buddy. And then we've got two wheel bikers. <laughs> two wheel bikers. Ian and Tracy, how are you doing? I love you guys. Hey, up, Jay. Ian here. Our Tracy has a question and I have a question. Okay, Tracy's question first. She wants to know, is this going on YouTube? So this is a, a saying on their channel, Two Wheel Bikers. So go, go and check them out. And she'll always say, is this going on YouTube? And it's actually stuck now as a, as a bit of a mascot to that channel. And I think it's brilliant. And then Ian said, and I want to know, when are you coming to Two Wheel Bikers HQ for a coffee? Mate, you give me a shout. You tell me when you're available and I'll be there. I can be quite flexible. But yeah, just waiting for the invite, buddy. <laughs> so Dale Wintle, 9969. Are you Dale? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you after so many months down at uh, Moniash. Hope you're doing really well, pal. Question. I know you own an electric car. Would you consider an electric motorcycle? And if so, which brand and for what reasons? Keep up the great work, Jay. Do you know what, Dale, if I'm completely honest with you, I can't even think of a brand for an electric bike. The electric car, when I first got that, I started off with a Tesla. Um, first electric car I'd ever owned and I was just had fuel anxiety all the time. It's a bit better with a BMW now that I've got. Bike-wise... Yeah, I, I don't think I'd ever have a bike because I, I just think that fuel anxiety would just creep in because I know that the range on some of them are just like 100 miles and it's, it's, it'd be no good for me. Just be constantly charging. I think if you was commuting, I think, yeah, they're ideal. I've never I've never ridden one. I've only ever seen one in the flesh probably twice. So if there are any electric companies out there want to want to chuck me one and let me borrow it for a week and see how I go with it, then I might change my mind on it. But uh, the answer is probably no, mate, because of the, the mileage. I'm sure they're a lot of fun. Cheers. Appreciate that, Dale. Ride with me. Hiya, buddy. Another YouTuber. Uh, no budget or restrictions. What would your dream motorcycle tour be? So I have mentioned earlier about, obviously, the Australia, the Vietnam, all them sort of places, Route 66. I think the dream motorbike tour, I think I think if we want to pin it down, like I said, there's so many to do, but I think if we wanted to pin it down, I definitely want to do the do uh, Route 66 at some point. It'd have to be on a Harley Davidson just to get that, just to say that you've done it, just to go there and just see what it's all about. And uh, yeah, that, that'd be quite good. And the dream motorbike, just a big, the most expensive Harley Davidson you could buy. So thanks for that, buddy. Appreciate that one. 
So the next one, Yorkshire person, how are you doing? Uh, I'd like to ask how many times you have been done for speeding and do you think there is too much effort expense spent on speed management versus the genuinely dangerous riders, drivers that cameras are never going to pick up? First of all, yes, I have been done for speeding, not on a bike. When I did my Alps trip, 10 days around the Alps, came off the bike in the Alps because somebody decided to drive into me head on, ended up with a little car driving back and got a speeding ticket through France crappiest little car that i've ever driven in my life and ended up going to speeding ticket because i basically wanted to get home many years ago they're all off my license now so uh, so yeah when i go fast on a bike sometimes you might see it on the videos where i just have a throttle blip i like to throttle blip i don't i don't ride unsafe i think i'm a safe safe rider every anyone who comes out with me i'll always say to them you know just go off do your own thing we'll meet up at the other end that's it that's the way i work i'll never never get drawn into anything like that and then you've put um and do you think there is too much effort expense spent on speed management versus the generally dangerous riders, drivers that cameras are never going to pick up? I don't think there's uh, enough money spent on it if if they really want to cramp, clamp down on things because, yeah, there are hot spots where police sit. Uh, there are hot spots with cameras. Cameras tend to be from accident, black spots. And I think for me, when I see a camera on, a, on an area, it's not the fact that, oh, you know what what they're doing here they're just trying to catch us out probably makes me more alert i'm hoping that answers your question so uh but thank you very much for that yorkshire person steve my mate Stephen mccollum so steve is uh again a good friend from picos uh, the angry scots as they uh, refer to him but yeah really good to meet you pal really good to meet you and now i will be up to scotland at some point and we will be going for that uh, you can show me around your beautiful country Hey buddy, how long does it take you to edit one of your videos? What clamps, brackets, etc. do you use to mount your cameras and bike and helmet? The editing, I can do an edit in three or four hours. Like some, some do take more than that, but genuinely I can fly through edits. Sometimes it's due to the software slowing down or trying, you're deciding to have a melt on me that, that takes the time or the rendering of the, tr of the video at the end of it that uh, decides it, it don't want to upload for another probably 10 hours. I put together an edit pretty quick and people have commented on that before how quick i put edits together you've also put what clamps and brackets etc do you use to mount them but i just use the clamps that you come with the cameras bud and the just looking up my helmet up there i've actually got a aliexpress special uh, chin mount it's been absolutely brilliant it's actually a metal one as well and then i just put the camera camera mount onto that so uh, thanks for that buddy and uh, hopefully i'll see you soon so next one is from Mark from Leeds. I've got to say it like that. He's another YouTuber. Hiya, Mark. How are you doing, pal? So, hey, pal, here's my question. I know you have spent a career in martial arts and you've perfected your art in being able to block punches, knees, elbows, kicks, and the odd takedown. Do you have a technique for blocking <laughs> gravel, gravel chipping? <laughs> That's all coming at you. Cheers. So I went out... Uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago with uh, Mark, Mac from Leeds. We were going across the strines and it was full of uh, grit and gravel. And he thought it was funny because he's good at off-roading to come flying past, mate, and just spray me with, spray me with gravel. So, yeah, thanks for that, Paul. And, uh, yeah, fell into that one, didn't I? <laughs> so, Rinky Dink 73274. How you doing, buddy? You okay? Okay, well, what do I do for a job? I'm a YouTuber. I mean, don't you know that? <laughs> no. I am a operations manager. I'm in a senior position and I work for a company. I'm not going to give the name of the company, but I work for a company that's uh, quite an international company. It's a French-based company. Um, we look after en energy solutions, refurbishment, facilities management, basically, uh, well, construction refurbishment, things like that as well. My background, I'm a joiner by trade. Did that many years ago, worked up into a building surveyor's position. Then I went into a project management uh, position. So it's all construction-based. Very early days, I did work for the post office, um, but that worked well with the missus with the kids as well to sort of um, get the right out. So I was working in the morning, she was working in the afternoon, so it worked with it, with having a young family, so it wasn't costing us a lot on uh, on childcare. Yeah, I'm uh, currently an operations manager. I've got managers underneath me, it pays well. It's very stressful at times, can get very boring at times, but uh, it pays the bills and uh, yeah, so I am... Um, I work as well as do the YouTube stuff. So thanks for that. Good question, Paul. So the next one is the Biker Guys Official, another YouTuber. Any advice for someone who's just starting out with a YouTube channel and vlogging? 
maybe what editing software do you use? The editing software I use is Filmora, Wondershare Filmora. I believe it used to, I got, I paid 30 odd quid for it and it was a lifetime subscription, which I know Peaky Bike has got the same one as well. I think it's a little bit more now though. I think it's, you, you've got to pay something like 20 pound a month for it. So, but your best option is just go to DaVinci Resolve. So DaVinci Resolve is a free, there's a free system. They also do the paid version as well, but the free version is supposed to be very good and a lot of people use that. Give that one a go. So uh, DaVinci Resolve. Any on any advice for someone who's just started out with their YouTube channel? All I would say is, like I mentioned earlier, be yourself. Don't try and fake it. Don't try and be something you're not. Just be natural. Just enjoy it as well. You've got to enjoy it. Um, but yeah, just be yourself. 100%. It's the most important thing, I think. So VFR, Mitch has come in again. E5 or E10 and why? Mate, as long as it goes in my fuel tank and it makes my bike go, I don't really care what it is. So Craig M49. Hi, Craig. How are you doing, Paul? Um, if you wasn't a biker, what else would you do instead? If I wasn't a biker, I would probably, if I could, if I knew about editing and making videos, I'd probably still do the same and make videos. What I would do, I don't, I'd probably adventure videos just in the car, maybe. Um, I like off-roading. I like off-roading cars and stuff like that. I've, I haven't done any recently, but I used to do that um many 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 years ago so yeah if i wasn't a bike i'd probably do that I'd, i might even still be in teaching as well doing uh, martial arts teaching martial arts so uh, thanks for that craig motor rev craig if tomorrow the youtube police said you are banned from making motorcycle videos with immediate effect but you can turn your channel into another subject what would your alternative channel be about and what new name would you give it i think it'd be martial arts I think it would be, um, I'd probably have to get someone to do the demonstrations because my uh, my arms and legs don't move as, as they used to. But yeah, I think it'd be martial arts because I am very, uh, very knowledgeable in, in the martial arts and, I, and uh, I have taught for many years. And what new name would I give it? Uh, crazy Legs. <laughs> yeah, Crazy Legs. So yeah, thanks for that, Craig. Right, guys, I'm hoping that uh, answered uh, the questions that you sent to me. And, and again, thank you very much for, for sending me them questions. I'm hoping it flowed and it didn't bore you too much. Uh, There's quite a, quite a lot to get through there, really. As I'm sort of like looking at this before I'm editing it, I'm actually on an hour. I've hit an hour with that. So by the time I brought it back down, brought it down a little bit, I'll probably take it to about 45 minutes. So it's probably a reasonable length. So thank you so much. Again, I can't thank you enough um, for the support for the comments, for the likes, for the shares. And like I say, again, if you can get me to 3,000 subs by uh, clicking that subscribe button, doesn't cost a thing. And thank you so much to all the YouTubers as well that uh, have, have participated in that. And I uh, hope you get some kickback from this and get them uh, subscribing to your channels and checking you out. So I'll give the details too many. There's quite a few to remember on there, actually, especially for my old wrinkled brain. But remember, guys, it doesn't matter who you are, what you ride, or where you're from. Because every day is an adventure. Crazy out.